So in light of the things that are going on right now, it made me want to watch some virus slash end of the world type movies and apparently everyone's doing it. Contagion is the first one that came to mind, but I've seen that movie before, and it's a little bit too real for me to want to watch it right now. However, I remember there being another big disease movie called Outbreak, which I came to find out was on the top 10 trending list on Netflix. I plan to watch it and review it since I haven't seen a lot of the new releases in theaters lately, and mainly because it seemed like it's relevant to a lot of people nowadays. Now don't get me wrong, I enjoyed it, but to me it was just a slightly worse version of Contagion, so I wasn't really inspired to talk about it on my channel. It's not bad though, check it out if you're bored in quarantine, probably like a 6.5 out of 10. But anyway, I was scrolling through Netflix last night and I stumbled upon Train to Busan. This is a film I've heard a lot of good things about, and since I was in a virus end of the world kind of mood, I decided to finally give it a watch. And yeah, it's in Korean, which means it takes a little bit more effort to watch, but Parasite helped me warm up to that sort of thing. Once you overcome the one inch tall barrier of subtitles, you will be introduced to so many more amazing films. So the premise is pretty simple. Train to Busan is about a group of people trapped on a train during a zombie outbreak. We mainly follow a father and daughter throughout the film who have a pretty broken relationship that gets tested during this adventure. You'll learn quickly that the conflict in the relationship comes from the father being selfish with a more every man for himself mentality, while the daughter was taught by her mother to be more generous and empathetic towards other people. This movie is very clever with what it does with that theme of selfishness versus selflessness. The writers knew what they were doing here because a zombie outbreak is one of the most suitable scenarios for something like this. There are so many scenes where characters are instantly colored by the decisions they make. The question of should they save themselves or should they risk their lives to save someone else constantly comes up. The character writing in general is what really made this a good zombie movie. Even though it's very fast paced, there are a lot of smaller scenes in between the action that allow us to understand the personalities of each character and their relationships with the people they care about most on this train. A lot of zombie movies and shows usually end up feeling stale and repetitive due to the over-reliance on action and chase scenes. However, Train to Busan understands that the way to make a good zombie movie is to have well-developed characters that we actually care about with interesting relationships and full character arcs by the end of the story. Zombies in general are just very one-note villains, so you have to craft a good cast of characters around them in order to tell personal and human stories that we as an audience can relate to. In film, the whole point of a zombie outbreak is to kind of reveal certain things that we may never find out about ourselves until we're in that kind of life or death scenario. The writers understood this and put a lot of effort into making the main crew feel like real flawed people. A lot of the characters traits are shown to us through how they interact with other passengers on the train and more dangerous situations where they have to make split second decisions. That type of writing makes this situation feel more real since no character ever stops to monologue about their past or talk about who they are when they're not on this train. This movie also sets up rules for how the zombies behave that allow for some really creative and suspenseful action scenes. You'd think it'd get boring watching people fight zombies in the narrow hallways of a train, but the claustrophobic setting only makes the action scenes that much more intense. The characters constantly have to figure out new ways to get by, keeping the action beats feeling fresh and interesting every time. I don't get why more action movies don't do this. I know some people are entertained by mindless punching and kicking, but the slightest gimmick can really elevate an action scene. For example, that's why I think Iron Man 3 has some of the most fun action scenes in the entire MCU. Like there's that scene where Tony has to take down helicopters without any of his projectiles, or that other scene where he uses store-bought items to take down some guys. I honestly don't get why more movies don't put more thought into their action beats like this. I also like the fact that the characters didn't always have weapons with them. That just made the scenes feel even more dire anytime they were faced with a group of zombies running towards them. It reminds us that these are just normal people. I was surprised to never see any of the main characters use a gun to headshot a zombie. Not bad, huh? It's cooler that way since it forces the characters to either think their way out of situation or get dangerously close to getting bit. Not to mention, the acting especially by the young daughter was amazing. She's the real heart of this film. Her scenes with the father character had the most emotion behind them by far. Also, it's nice to finally see a comic relief character that's more downplayed than what these types of movies usually do. The look of the zombies was also really cool, and they did a good job of making them feel actually threatening. Even one on its own is hard enough to deal with in this universe. In contrast, after 
after like 20 seasons of The Walking Dead, a slow moving zombie isn't going to be that frightening. The lack of CGI and more practical makeup and sets was also much appreciated here. I'm going to give Train to Busan an 8 out of 10. I urge you to check this one out on Netflix. Apparently it's getting a sequel this year, but it'll likely get delayed like everything else. I haven't seen the animated prequel, but I'll probably give it a watch now that I've seen this. So yeah, thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe. I got a bigger story time video coming soon, but I wanted to get something out there in the meantime since it's a really slow time for movies nowadays.